Welcome to Stonewall at 50, a CUNY TV digital series celebrating Pride 2019. This is Merlin with Greta Schiller and Andrea Weiss from Jezebel Productions. Greta Schiller is an award-winning independent documentary film producer and director. The International Sweethearts of Rhythm, Paris Was a Woman, and The Man Who Drove with Mandela are some of her best-known work. Andrea Weiss is a non-fiction author, documentary filmmaker. Her books include Paris Was a Woman, about lesbian life in Paris between the wars, Vampires and Violets, Lesbians in Film, and Stonewall, which we're here to talk about, which is the basis for the film Before Stonewall. Greta, how did you come up with the concept of Before Stonewall? Good question. People often ask that. Um, and I've recently gone back into my notes to remember because it was a long time ago that I made the film. But um, in the in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, Julia Reichardt and uh, a couple of other feminist filmmakers were the first people to start using oral history as history in documentary films. And they did it because the history of women and working class people were written out. So my co-director and I, Robert Rosenberg, had the idea that we should do something like this for gay and lesbian people. So uh, early on, we brought Andrea in as a, you know, to shape the project and do the research and pull it together. And presto, you have the film. the book a result of making the film? Well, the book came out after the film, and it was really a kind of um, idea that Greta and I had to make the film a little more user-friendly for educational purposes. So that was kind of, it was, it was definitely after. There were a few books on lesbian and gay history before we made Before Stonewall, and certainly we leaned on them and on the historians who wrote them. But there wasn't any kind of comprehensive look at the same ground that the film covers, which is lesbian and gay experience in the United States before Stonewall. How did Stonewall turn from a shaming technique by the police and politicians into a rallying cry for our nation? Greta? Well, you know, it's interesting because the Stonewall riots, there was a homophile movement, but they were really focused on, you know, we want to look like that we're employable by the federal government. We want to blend into the dominant culture. But the, the subculture and the mass majority of queers, they were not interested in that. There was no entry point for them, right? So Stonewall was a bar where a lot of young people, trans, what now we call transgender people, but you know, butch femme and, and queens would go and congregate because it was a safe space. Every culture needs safe spaces. It was, had another twist, which was the mafia, because homosexuality and cross-dressing was illegal, the mafia would require payouts from the owners of the bar in order to not do police raids. And one night, it was like a hot summer night. Judy Garland had just died. And the women's movement was just the beginnings of the third wave of feminism. And these, these young people just said, screw you. We're not taking it anymore. And they just went out into the streets and said, we're fighting back. And interestingly enough, the, none of the mainstream media covered the riots. Luckily, Fred McDera was, you know, he was a documenter as a photographer of downtown culture. So he went out and took pictures and they were published in the Village Voice. This was not on the radar, but it was on the radar of the homosexual community. And that's when you had your proliferation of Gay Liberation Front and community centers and starting to come together and say, you know, we, what are we going to do? Andrea, 
How were the lesbians represented in the women's movement? There were rumblings in the women's movement in the 60s. There was, it was a very mainstream movement. It was run, you know, by like Betty Friedan and National Organization for Women. And lesbians were very active in that, but they weren't out as lesbians, right? It really wasn't until after Stonewall that what we think of now as the second wave of, of feminism, the women's movement, where it was really a, a huge groundswell of feminist and particularly lesbian feminist activity started like in the started in the early 70s. It was after Stonewall. Oh, okay. It was like I would say the period between maybe 1970, 71, where there was the you know the Furies, which Charlotte Bunch was involved with, and Rita Mae Brown, and radical lesbians, and some of these much more edgier groups sprung up after 1970, and that went on till the middle to latter end of the 70s. How was Before Stonewall received? So I think it was the first feature documentary on any subject directed by a lesbian funded by PBS. It was the first film to win an Emmy for best research. There was, there was the first time their best research, I think they, they founded the best research Emmy because Andrea did such an amazing job on the research. I don't think so, but okay. She, <laughs> yeah. won, she won that Emmy. She yeah. got that Emmy, yeah. I was nominated as best director, and the producers, and I, I, which I was one, got the best historical film that year. So it was kind of like whammo, like instant success. I was very young. One of my favorite ones was in Oklahoma. Andrea and I went down, because Andrea knew people in Oklahoma, and we organized a screening of the film with, and it was the first time a gay group and the film arts group ever worked together. So they were really happy we brought them together. And we were like, we're going to screen this film here anyway. And it was in a shopping mall. And on the poster, which said, before Stonewall, the making of a gay and lesbian community, the management of the shopping mall, where the cinema was, blacked out the words gay and lesbian on the poster. OK, the images are of gay and lesbian people, but somehow those Poor people in Oklahoma couldn't see those words. So, and then we, when it was where it was broadcast, we got just an overwhelming number of letters of people just saying, thank you. This is the first time we've ever been acknowledged or recognized, and you know, just thank you. And then we got a few, some hate mail. I'm never gonna give money to PBS again because you're broadcasting this crap. That was very minimal. And quite surprising from the PBS audience. Although, of course, now we know it doesn't mean they were PBS audience. It could have been anyone writing that. Was Stonewall a rebellion or a riot? Yeah, this is a really interesting thing. Because the thing about the time of the Stonewall, I would say riot, um, which led to a rebellion movement, you could say. But like most movements that started out with big dreams of changing society and transforming the human, it kind of got sidelined. Now it's like a corporate marketing opportunity, the main pride event. You know, it's not too much about, like, maybe the society in which we live is a little problematic. That's kind of been lost. There was no forethought, we're launching an international movement that's going to change <laughs> life as we know it. In fact, there's a, there's a still, there's a photograph in our film that was taken by Fred McDara of The Village Voice that shows a board, a sign up at the Stonewall Inn where the Mattachine Society, which was a movement, which had literally strategically thought about how to integrate gay and lesbian people into mainstream culture, were asking the rioters to go home and stop this nonsense. There's, a, there's an image where, um, that shows that they were actually against the riots. They, didn't, they thought it was going to hurt their efforts. I could see that. And so, to say that it was a rebellion imp implies that there was a certain um, long-term strategy. And the long-term strategy was, in there was a long-term strategy, but it was, in fact, the opposite of what the rioters were doing, which was simply saying no. They were saying, we've had it, we're hot, we're bothered, we're not putting up with this anymore. And I'm sure they never could have imagined what they had instigated. Not at all, not at all. Well, where were you in 1969? I was in high school in Ann Arbor, Michigan, being part of the burgeoning, you know, uh, lefty movement, anti-war movement, environmental movement. We would go and have rap groups in with students at the U of M on, they could ask us questions about our life. <laughs> That's good. Uh, 
And where were you in 1969? In 1969, I was 13 years old and preparing for my bat mitzvah. And I certainly didn't know I was a lesbian. <laughs> I corrupted her. Oh, really? Well, you have been partners since the early 80s. Are you also partners in life? Yes. Very good. Did you get married? Yes, we did. What, we did recently you... got married because our daughter said, Mom, you have to get married. What if they take the right away from you? And we're like, now that's a perspective. So we did. Because <laughs> we nice. were always like, who wants to get married? We, want to, we don't believe in all this heterosexual crap and all this kind of, of, we don't need the government, certainly not a church, to validate our relationship. But then she convinced us it was the right thing to do. That's what kids do. Is there a memorable moment with, with an it's, audience member? It's funny. I think one of, my, one of my recent memorable moments was when the film was uh, invited to be at the Berlin Film Festival retrospective, great honor, in 2016. Um, one of a, a young a guy, 20-something film student guy, came up, he raised his hand, and he said, when did you make this film? And I said, well, let's see. Uh, it was released in Germany in, say, 1985. And he was like, that was, that was before I was born, and it just feels so con so. He didn't use the word contemporary, but, you know. It's so modern. I mean, wh wow, wow. And then that's of course the greatest compliment you can get. And there was one old man that I will never forget, who wrote to us because he had read about before Stonewall in the local gay press, and he, he he's basically we still have that letter. You know, I'm a senior citizen. I'm living on a very small fixed income, but I enclose, I enclose. Two dollars, two dollar bills. Um, I enclose two dollars and will send you two dollars the first of every month until the film is finished. Wow, you can't <laughs> get support like that. That's what politicians are wishing for today from I a million know. people. I mean, of course, two dollars was, you know, maybe eight dollars today, but yeah. still, it was not yeah. a big amount. But right. it meant so much to him that he pledged that he was going to do that until the film was finished. I want to thank both of you for coming today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. This is Merlin with Greta Schiller and Andrea Weiss from Jezebel Productions. We hope you enjoyed our discussion of Before Stonewall, the making of a gay and lesbian community. Please join us next week for another installment of Stonewall at 50, a CUNY TV digital series celebrating Pride 2019. Thank you for watching. Come <laughs>